Hello there, I am Richard Osman. Welcome along to a brand new week on House of Games. I have four famous faces. They're going to play a series of quizzes. And at the end of the week, one of them is going to get their hands on this extraordinary trophy. Shall we meet our players this week? They are Lou Sanders, <laughs> Reverend Richard Coles, Dr Maggie Adderin Pocock, and Stuart McConey. Welcome, everybody. Everyone's got a title, Lou, apart from you and Stuart. <laughs> yeah. Now, Lou, we were talking before, mm. and you said you've watched the show a number of times. How many questions have you got right while watching? Zero, unless I pause, Google the person, <laughs> go back to the show. Well, you're going to love our pause and Google round. <laughs> it's going to play into your hands. <laughs> Reverend Richard, a keen quizzer? Too keen. I'm afraid there's an awful, unreformed, competitive person in me that comes out in these circumstances. We quite like that on this show because we tend to be able to break it by Wednesday. Excellent. I look forward to that. Your, I need it. Your spirit will be gone. Also, a bit unfair because he's got God on his side, so God can just tell him the answers. If at any point I think you are conferring with God, <laughs> I will take a point off, just <laughs> so you know. <laughs> all right. Dr Maggie, we've got a reverend and a doctor as well, a space scientist of all things. Now, Dr Maggie, as well as winning this trophy at the end of the week, at the end of each show, there's also a daily prize which you can get your hands on. Shall we take a look at today's daily prizes? Maggie, what would you take home from these? There is the House of Games smoking jacket, House of Games shower curtain, there's the towel, there's the playing cards, and there's the House of Games bread bin, the most boring of all House of Games prizes. Anything there take your fancy? Well, see, I don't smoke, but that smoking jacket does, it has a, yeah. a velour, it has a sheen about it, which is rather appealing. It's good to not smoke, but you can still wear a smoking jacket. <laughs> Indeed. That's the beauty of it. They haven't banned that yet. <laughs> Stuart. Richard is competitive. You're a very good quizzer as well. It's not about being good or bad, Richard, is it? <laughs> it's just really... about the spirit of Oh, yeah. you know what? We've got two of them, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, lovely to have you all here. Thank it's you. going to be very competitive, apart from Lou. Um, <laughs> shall we start? Yes. Shall we get on, play our first game? Every time I press this buzzer, a new game comes up. I don't know what it's going to be. You don't know what it's going to be. Let's find our first game on Monday's House of Games. <laughs> Rhyme time is our first game. Rhyme time, I'm going to ask you two questions at a time. The answers rhyme with each other. As soon as you've got the answers, buzz in, tell me the answers. Here are your first questions. 1994 Tom Hanks film and field event featuring the Fosbury flop. That is Stuart. Forrest Gump, high jump. Oh. Is it Forrest Gump and high jump? Here's a lovely start to the show for Stuart McConey. Well done. Next question. Bear character created by A.A. A. Milne. And who is this? That is Lou. Winnie the Pooh, Louis Theroux. <laughs> Winnie yeah. the Pooh, Louis Theroux. Well done, Lou. There you go. Thank you. Next question. Solo Scottish dance and Aaron Sorkin White House drama. Stuart. Highland Fling and West Wing. Oh, is yeah. it Highland Fling and West Wing? It is Highland Fling and West Wing. Well, please, Stuart. Here's your next one. Who is this? And what is this song? Yes, that's Stuart. Marilyn Monroe and Orinoco Flow. Orinoco Flow by Enya. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe, Stuart McConey, another point. Well done. He's good on the buzzer, isn't he? He's very good on the buzzer. And he's yes. good on the answer. And on the answer. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> to be fair. Helps as well. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's got a little bit of both. Right, next question, everybody. Animated cartoon French skunk and Shakespeare play featuring Petruchio and Katharina. <laughs> yes, Stuart. Is it Pepe Le Pew and the Taming of the Shrew? Wow. So we take a look. <laughs> it is Pepe Le Pew, the Taming of the Shrew. <laughs> Well done. Well done if you got that at home as well. Next question. Composer of 1953 opera Gloriana and Kerry Katona's girl group. That is Richard. Uh, it's Benjamin Brisson, an atomic kitten. You're the first person ever to say those two things <laughs> at the same sentence, and you're absolutely right. Benjamin Britton, an atomic kitten. <laughs> Next question. Who is this and who is this? Oh, hey, here's a guess. OK. Is it Kelsey Grammer and MC Hammer? Is it Kelsey Grammer and MC Hammer? Well done. 
<laughs> wow, I didn't recognise MC Hammer at all. No, no well, I you don't see the trousers. It's the yeah. trousers that do yeah. it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> Final question in this round. Irish author of the novel Ulysses and 1998 film starring Jane Horrocks. The Reverend Richard. James Joyce and Little Voice. James Joyce and Little Voice. Well done, James Joyce and Little Voice. Good end to the round for the Reverend Richard Cole. <laughs> Good round for Stuart there. Let's take a look at our first scoreboard of the week. See exactly how we stand. Maggie, yet to get off the mark. Lou, you have one point, which is great. Aww. Richard, you have two. Stuart McConey, our early leader with five points. Well done, Stuart. Very nicely done. It all changes. Though. It all changes very quickly. Shall we get straight on to round two? Yes. OK, round two today is going to be... Distinctly average. Round two is always a pairs game, and in pairs games, the player in the last place gets to choose their partner. Maggie, that is you today. Who you. would you like to play with? Would you? Would you care to? I'd love to. <laughs> I'd love really? to, Maggie. You see, that's how you can tell she's a scientist. <laughs> well, let me take a look at the data here. <laughs> yeah, a quick analysis of the data. Yeah, I did no. conclude. She's taken round one as an experiment, <laughs> and she's she's worked out her conclusions. <laughs> Maggie, yeah. you're yeah. with Stuart, Lou, and Richard. You are a team. Would you take out your tablets, please? Oh yeah. I am going to ask you. Uh, a series of questions now. They all have numerical answers. You just have to write down what you think is the answer. OK, I'm then going to take an average of each pair's answer. Team up with someone at home if you want, or see if your one answer is better than their average answer. Here's your first question. Write down a number for this, please. According to the British Parachute Association, how many people in the UK made a parachute jump for the first time in 2018? Tricky one, isn't it? Because mm. you, you, people yeah. do parachute jumps and they, you have to sponsor them and what have you. Lou, what have you said? Not tricky for me. It's 15,000. It's 15, clear to me. 15,000. <laughs> OK. Richard, what have you said? 1,417, says Richard. Let's take a look, shall we, at your average? 8,208.5. I was going to say 8,000, first of all, so I'm happy with that. OK, Lou is happy. Let's see what Maggie and Stuart think. Maggie, what have you gone with? Well, I, I went very similar to Lou, you see. Well, 1,500 you've gone with there. Yes, oh, 1,500. 1, 1, oh, so Lou I went, went for 15,000, Lou went. Oh, oh wow, sorry, OK. I missed, I missed that. Are you absolutely certain Maggie is a scientist? <laughs> <laughs> How they ever reached the moon, I do not know. <laughs> it was a challenge. Yeah, we go, yeah, I, yeah, we've got to the moon. I think we're actually only a tenth of the way there, Maggie, but... Uh... <laughs> keep going, keep going. Stuart, up or down from 1,500? I start, well, I started by working out how many people a week probably do sponsored parachute jumps in the okay. UK, and then I realised I couldn't do that math. Yes. So I picked a number out of the air, and I put 5,000. 5,000. So your average, Maggie and Stuart, your average is 3,250. Let's take a look how many people took their first parachute jump in 2018. And who has got the point? Whoa! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Everybody is parachuting. Yes. It's amazing, 56,000. So that's, a, that's over 1,000 a week. I'm amazed, I'm amazed there's any space in the sky. Uh, Lou, you were the sort of closer 15,000, mm. closest overall, but the point there to Richard and Lou. Wow. Very well done. <laughs> what is the answer to this question, please? How many cities, towns and villages are there in total in the UK? According to townslist.co.uk. What do you think of home? I know you all live in one, so that, that's one. But it does feel like there must be a bit of maths you can do. I'll be channeling an answer from the angels. <laughs> well, okay, good. vicars have an advantage here. Oh, why so? Because I think I know how many parishes there are in the UK. Oh, that's interesting. We will start now with uh, Maggie and Stuart on this one. So, Maggie, what have you gone for? 300,000. 300,000. OK, Stuart, up or down? Slightly down. Well, quite a lot down. But again, there's no logic to this. This is just a figure that looked cute to me. <laughs> so 129,000. Yeah. So, Maggie and Stuart, your average is... That is 214,500. That would mean, I think, that there's only about 300 people in each I place. <laughs> I'm just thinking that myself. And I'm just thinking of London, which is yeah. that's got more than 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lou, where are you? I think I've gone too low, but I've gone 26 thou, and then I've added a little bit. <laughs> 26 thousand sounds more reasonable given Does the it? maths we were just doing. Okay, well that was a guess. Uh, Richard, up or down from 26 thousand? 18,000. Oh, oh no, so he's happy. Yeah. But no, no. But then I just <laughs> realised that yeah. I only know England parishes. I don't think I've included. <laughs> Welsh. But that's OK, because Lou has. Yeah. So yeah. you're fine. I included, and Scientology. So your average is 22,000. 
So what do you think at home? 214,000, that's 300 people in every town, village and city in the UK, or 22,000? You're lower, you're higher, what do you reckon? So how many cities, towns and villages are there in the UK and who has got the point? Ooh! 38,300, the point goes to Lou and Richard again. Lou, once again, you're the closest. Mm. How about that? You're like a savant. It feels great. It this feels is amazing great. stuff. Uh, I'd just like to thank everybody who's been behind me in this round. <laughs> yeah. uh, last question in this round. Oh, what is the answer to this? In pounds, how much was the Pink Star Diamond sold for at auction in 2017? The world's most expensive gemstone at the time, the Pink Star Diamond. Oh, golly. <laughs> um. Hmm, what do you think? It's probably going to be a lot, isn't it? That's my guess. Maggie has yet to get a point. I would love yes. it if Maggie and Stuart could win this one. Just no pressure. <laughs> Richard, how many pounds have you said the Pink Star Diamond was? 19 million. Lou, up or down from 90 million? Uh, 17 million, that's the one. And also, that's it. What does that say at the bottom? 17 mil, short for million. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> 17 mil, short for million, just in case at home you're worried. So 17 and 90, let's take a look at your average. That's 53,500,000 for Lou and Richard. Maggie, we need to get your point here. What have you gone for? <laughs> I've gone for 24 million. OK. Stuart, up or down? 130 million. Oh, hold on a minute. Last <laughs> of the big spenders there on the end. Uh, 130 million, says Stuart. Let's take a look at your average, Stuart and Maggie. It is 77 oh, million. Maggie, I think I've let you down again. So 53 million and 77 million. What do you think at home? What have you gone for? Let's take a look. The price of the Pink Star Diamond was. Whoa! Seven million three hundred thousand. You were both miles out individually. But I know, but amazing you're average. You're not wearing that ring anywhere, though, are you? Imagine if it went down the sink. Yeah. But a terrific average from uh, Richard and Lou. That's the end of that round. Very good round for Richard and Lou there. Tablets away, please, everybody. Let's take a look at the scores at the oh, end dear. of round two. Maggie, it's okay. We're very early on in the week. <laughs> Don't you worry about this. Okay. okay. Um, here's how we look. Maggie, consistent, nothing there. Lou has four points. Uh, we have joint leaders, Richard oh, and Stuart, yes. five points each. Yeah. Let's take a look at our next round today. It is... Pop art. We're going to show you the lyrics to some famous songs. It would be useful if you were a respected musical journalist and broadcaster, <laughs> Stuart. But we're going to show you them in pictorial form. we we'll show you a series of picture clues and they will lead you to the lyrics of a song. But what song? Fingers on buzzers, everybody. What is this song? It's a song from the year 1987, and here it is. Lou. I don't think it's right, but Somebody to Love? Is it Somebody to Love? It is not. Stuart. Is it I Want to Dance with Somebody by Whitney oh. Houston? Is it I Want to Dance with Somebody? Yes. Oh. It is. There's a feeling that he... Feel the heat. I want to burn the heat oh. with somebody. Yeah. Want to dance with somebody. OK, then repeat it. With somebody. You see how it works? Love. Yeah. <laughs> so get it now. <laughs> Very well done, Stuart. Your next song is from the year 1970. What's this song? Here are the lyrics in pictorial form. Stuart again. Is it raindrops keep falling on my head? There you go. Oh, I don't get the. That's a man, man whose feet are too big for his bed. Oh, yes. What? And then nothing seems to fit. Nothing seems to fit. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, I could sing that all day. BJ Thomas, of course, written by Burt Backrack. Next one in what we we're now calling the Stuart McConey round is a <laughs> song from 1968. These are the lyrics in the form of pictures. Lou. Sunflower baby, dustbin me. Is Thank it? <laughs> Sunflower Baby, Dustbin Me. Oh, I love that one. <laughs> it is not Sunflower Baby. It really looks like it, doesn't it? Um, Robson and Jerome. Anybody else? I can't get this one. Stuart. 
Is it Build Me Up Buttercup? Is it Build Me Up Buttercup? <laughs> yeah, oh. bravo. <laughs> Wow. Let me down. Mess me around. Uh, Build Me Up Buttercup by The Foundations. Great song. Last question in this round. Okay, what is okay. this song? From the year 1984. No, good. no, it's wrong. I, was gonna, I thought it might be Hello, Is It Me, You're... Looking for Lionel Richie, hello. Is it hello by Lionel Richie? Hello! Oh, oh, really? Is it me? It's in your eyes. Oh. You've got parsley in your teeth. I can see it in your eyes. Yes. <laughs> I can see it in your teeth. I can see it in your smile. Oh, oh really? Hey, I ain't complaining. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it was hello by Lionel Richie. Well done well if done. you it's said that one. Well done, Stuart, as well. Uh, it's the end of that round. Let's take a look at the scores. Oh, dear. Quite a good round for Stuart. Quite a good round. Maggie, you're yet to get off the mark. Lou, you have four. Richard, five. We have a clear leader, Stuart McConey, with nine points. Well done, Stuart. <laughs> When's the science round coming up? Then I'll get... Science no. round? I'm hearing very good news Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just wait till then, then. <laughs> exactly. Two more rounds to go, and the next round is... Where is Kazakhstan? This is our map round. If you'd all take out your tablets, please. We're going to show you a map, and then going to ask you some questions, and you have to find the answer on the map. And whoever is nearest will get themselves a point. Here's your map today. And it is a map of Asia. Okay, yes. First thing I would need you to find is this, please. The highest mountain Ooh. in the world. OK. So that's one of those ones I think we know what the answer is, but where the answer is is another matter entirely. What do you think at home? Have a little point. We'll put the, the map up now. Have a little point to where you think it is. So, the highest mountain in the world. Lou, I'm afraid we're going to start with you. <laughs> oh, boy. Now, do you know what the highest mountain in the world I is? I thought it was Mount Everest, which... I, which yep. Which, but, and I'm then where is that? Oh, I didn't think it was in Asia. <laughs> you didn't think it was in Asia? No. OK, yeah. interesting. <laughs> where did you think Everest was? Well, I don't know. Somewhere <laughs> out there. Lake district. <laughs> but I just had a little guess and I popped it there. So, Lou, you are... I'm going to say that's northern China, right at the top of China. Uh, Richard, do you also think it was Everest? I think it's Everest, yeah. And where do you imagine Everest might be? I think it's sort of India, Nepal, Pakistan, around okay. that way. And where have you placed your dot? You are in a country called Nepal. Right. Uh, Maggie, yes. where is Everest? Um, um, I thought Nepal, because I remember yep. the Sherpas and things like that. Uh, and I knew Nepal and China were having a bit of a ding-dong in the past. Okay. So I thought I wanted to put it on the border of China. But I think I'm, I put it um, higher up, so I think I've, I've got it too, too okay. much further. Let's see yes. where Maggie is. Yes, which is too far, I think. That's kind of Tajikistan you are there, Tajikistan, ah, China. is it? Stuart, so I presume you thought it was Everest? I did think it was Everest, but at that point, all my faculties failed me. Uh-oh. And I had a massive, complete physical and mental breakdown. And <laughs> forgot where the Himalayas are. Yes. And I've put them, and R Richard uh, has now made me think that he was right, and I've put mine... Well, you'll see. Kyrgyzstan. You're in Kyrgyzstan. Is that where I am? Yeah, you are indeed. So, the highest mountain in the world? It is Everest. It is in Nepal, which is exactly where Reverend Richard Coles is. Reverend Richard Coles gets the point. Very well done. <laughs> Look at that. I'm a little southwest of it. Bang, a little bit. It's actually on the border of China and Nepal, and you are a little bit further away from the border because of political sensibilities. I have responsibility <laughs> to be diplomatic and tactful. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Um, now we're looking for the answer to the next one, please. Where is this? The Temple Complex Angkor Wat. The temple complex, Angkor Wat. I know that one. That's a hairdresser's. <laughs> and off I go. <laughs> what do you think at home? Where's Angkor Wat? Anyone been there? People go there now, don't they? It's like a... Oh, I've been there. Tour. Have you been there? Yeah. Oh, come on, Maggie. <laughs> yeah. Maggie has been there. <laughs> Richard, we'll start with you. Where have you gone? If you look in that sort of interesting, rather congested bit, east of India, 
It's one of those. Okay. Um, because I think it's in Cambodia. Okay. And, and I've stuck an X where I think Cambodia is, but I don't know. Okay. Interesting. Stuart, <laughs> what did you think the answer was? I hate to sound like I'm just... It's adding so many things in my life, slavishly copying Richard, but <laughs> my thinking was pretty much the same. It's in Cambodia. I'm not really sure where Cambodia is, and I've put it just a bit further up that congested region. Okay. Look at that. There's Stuart Lou. Where did you think it was? Mm, I wasn't really sure, but I've gone for the same sort of area. <laughs> okay, gone for the same sort of area. Let's take a look. You might get a point by default, which are the finest points of all. Look at that. Yes. This is a lovely pattern the three yeah, of you have made. Forming, yeah. So, Maggie, you've been there? <laughs> I have. Where was it? Uh, it was Cambodia. Cambodia. Yes, it was definitely in Cambodia. And where have you put Cambodia? In that congested area where all the other dogs Take a look. Are. We really want Maggie to get a point here. <gasps> Whoa! Oh. Mm. So you are there right next to Richard. It's I lovely. can tell you, Lou, you're in Thailand. I love Thailand. Stuart, this... you're in Laos. Thought so. Maggie and Richard, you are both in Cambodia. Ooh. Which one of you is closer? No, it's a yes. Take a look. <laughs> it's the Come, on, Maggie. Come on, Maggie. I'm going to say that's Maggie. Yeah! Yeah. Well done. <laughs> You're absolutely Excellent. bang on. Yeah. For future shows in the week, can you give us a list of places you've been? No. <laughs> it just helps I, thought, us. I, thought, I thought I might get it horribly wrong. <laughs> oh, no, that's Did lovely, you? though. Well done. Point there for Maggie. Last question in this round. Can you find oh, yes, this, more. please? <laughs> Popular honeymoon destination that is Asia's smallest country in terms of land area. I know the air, I know what it is, but I don't know where it is. I think I might have been there and I could not find it on that map. Of course. I, I have been there. Have you? Yeah. Where would I put it? Gosh. What do you think at home? Point at the screen if you know the answer to this one. As a consensus, what did we think the answer Maldives. was? Maldives. Maldives. I was thinking Bali, but. Oh, wow. I'm going to clue. Stuart, let's take a look. So, what, what were you thinking? I had no clue where the most popular honeymoon destination is in the world. So, um, let's see where you've with gone. With my ruthlessly unsentimental attitude to life. So, I looked where I thought the smallest dot on the map was. And oh, it's okay. somewhere up by. Well, you'll see. If you are <laughs> about to get married. Yeah. <laughs> firstly, our congratulations to you. It's lovely. Isn't yeah. It? Isn't that a nice thing? Yes. Secondly, I would say if you're looking at a surprise honeymoon destination, <laughs> I would not choose Uzbekistan, which I'm sure is lovely. Oh, come on. I'm, so sure is, I'm absolutely sure it's lovely, but just, there might be better places. <laughs> Did you have a honeymoon? In Uzbekistan. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, that's why you went for it. Um, Lou, everybody else thinks it's the Maldives. Maldives, Maldives. Yeah. And so where have you put the Maldives, Lou? I, well, it's a complete guess, but it's the where, where there was a little... It's surrounded by sea, I do know that about the Maldives. Mm. So I had a pop, bottom Lou. left. OK. Richard, agree, disagree? I think it's the Maldives, and I've been to the Maldives, <laughs> and I think it's that lovely little archipelago that falls off the bottom of India. So Richard has gone... Oh. ..there. Yeah. Maggie, you also thought it was the Maldives? No, I thought it was Bali. Oh, you thought it was Bali? Yes, which is, I think, probably uh, not that small. Let's see where you put Bali. Yes, yeah, I might not put it in the right place, but... <laughs> uh, so, yeah, Indonesia. Yes. So, it's, it's, it's a battle, pretty much, between Lou mm -hmm. and Richard. The answer is the Maldives. I'll tell you now, one of you is in the Maldives. One of you is having a honeymoon in the Maldives. <laughs> the other of you is having a honeymoon in the Yemen. Oi, oi! <laughs> <laughs> Which is it? Who has won the point? Where are the Maldives? Where have you put them at home? Oh, Good call. Oh, very well oh. done. Good. You're your doc. Very nicely done. Well done if you got that at home as well. I have Tablets away, please. Were they as lovely as they sound? So beautiful. Really beautiful. Mm. Um, that um, is the end of round four. Let's take a look at what it's done to the scores. One round to go before we find gosh. Monday's champion. Who is it going to be? <laughs> the leaderboard <laughs> going into that last round looks a little bit like this. Maggie off the mark with one point. Lou, you have four. Richard catching up, seven points. Stuart still two-point lead, nine points. It all comes down to our final round. The final round is always the same. It is always... Answer smash. We're going to show you a picture. There'll be a clue underneath. Smash them together and give me the answer. Fingers on buzzers. Buzz in, give me a correct answer. You get a point. Buzz in, give an incorrect answer, though you lose a point. Maggie, well, got one. do not lose <laughs> Don't go negative. Here. OK. Good luck, everybody. Your first category is... Bread. Yeah. I You'll love see... bread. Excellent. It's my lucky day. We are playing to your strengths. Here's your first clue. 
which singer had UK top 40 hits with the songs I Put a Spell on You and My Baby Just Cares for Me? That is Richard. It's Panina <laughs> Simone. I'll take it, I'm afraid. That is Lou. I'm not going to rush this. <laughs> Panina Simone. That's exactly what Richard just said. <laughs> Literally. Uh, Maggie. P Panini Simone. Again, all three of you have said the same thing. <laughs> I actually thought it was Panina Simone. Panini um, Simone. Well, you've all said Panini Simone, and the answer is Panini na Simone. Oh. Panini oh, na Simone. Come on. That was absolute carnage. <laughs> it was. <laughs> uh, and I lost the one point I had. Shall we forget this ever happened and move on to another type of bread <laughs> yeah. and another soul yeah. singer? Uh, here's your next one. What is the name of the character played by Keanu Reeves in The oh. Matrix? <laughs> Richard. Panatonio. Is it Panatonio? Panatonio. Oh. Very well played. Shall we do something that isn't bread? Next category is <laughs> comic actors. Uh. Those will be the pictures. There'll be clues underneath. Which team tennis trophy did Great Britain beat Belgium to win in 2015? That is Stuart. Julia Davis Cup. Julia oh. Davis and Davis Cup, is that right? That's Julia Davis good. Cup, well done. <laughs> Very well played. Next comic actor. Would I Lie to You was a 1992 UK number one hit for which duo? <laughs> yes, that's Stuart. Craig, Charles and Eddie. Craig, Charles and Eddie. Craig, Charles and Charles and Eddie. Well played. Next comic actor. Which chemical element has the symbol MN? That is Richard. Stephen Manganese. Is it Stephen Manganese? Uh, it is Stephen Mangan and Manganese. Well played. Next category. No more <laughs> categories. Our time here is done. Let's take a look at our final leaderboard. Who has won Monday's House of Games, Lou? I wonder who it could be. Yes. Our winner on Monday's House of Games is... Stuart wow. McConey. Look, look at that. that. 11 Stop. points for Stuart. Wow. Stuart on eight. Lou on three. Maggie on zero. Very well done, Stuart. Stuart, that means you've won yourself a prize. Yes. Ooh. What would you like to take home with you on Monday's House of Games? Your smoking um, jacket, bread bin, playing cards, shower curtain. I think I'm going to go for the smoking jacket. Yes. Yeah. Smoking jacket. Stuart McConey, Monday's winner, takes home the House of Games. Smoking jacket, well done. And we'll take a look at the points you've got on the leaderboard for tomorrow. It's the first time we'll see our weekly leaderboard. Maggie, you have won. I've got a point again. Sorry. You've actually got more points <laughs> on that than you, actually, than you did in the show. <laughs> Very like impressive. <laughs> Lou, you have two. Richard, you have three. Stuart, you have four. That's only the first day of five, though. Could all change, often does change. I'll see the four of you, same time, same place tomorrow. I'll see you as well on the House of Games. <laughs>